much everyone for coming. So if uh, last year you had a Breslev class here in the Rosh Chodesh Av, and now this year you have a class in one day after Rosh Chodesh, so in 365 years, you're gonna, it's going to be a breast of color. <laughs> so I'm going to try to hold on Mashiach as much as I can, that he won't uh, destroy our plans. <laughs> Yesterday in class, I spoke about humility, that... Um, we're going through things in life and uh, those things are humbling us and uh, we have a problem with that, it's an issue for us. It's true, the Torah is telling us that that's the purpose of our life, to be humble, but we hate it. <laughs> we cannot stand it. It's. Uh, it's the hardest thing ever to be humiliated, that your self-esteem will be destroyed, that you, that you feel so bad with yourself. And so many times the things that are happening to us are showing to us really how far we are from things that we ourselves already realize that are very important, like honesty, and suddenly you find yourself lying, and to be generous, and suddenly you find yourself cheap, and to go and tell everyone how great you are, and how amazing you do, and suddenly to realize that you don't know how to make one step, and you're lost, and you don't have no advice, and and the worst of them all is that we're claiming to have faith and re then you realize that it's Hashem that is doing it all to you, so it's a dead end, like... Uh, what you're gonna do with those humiliations? So, the Vida Melech is saying in Tehilim, Shir HaMa'alot Mimamakim Kreaticha Adonai Adonai Shima Bekoli King David is teaching us that we need to scream to Hashem from the depths. And the Pisyantse Rebbe, he said that the meaning of that verse, Mimamakim Kreaticha Hashem, that King David is saying to Hashem, I was calling you from the depths. So he's explaining, I fell to one place to one depth and over there I called you and you didn't answer and then I fell even deeper and from that place the second falling from that place I'm calling you so I'm not giving up on calling you even if you're not answering Mimamakim plural many fallings many failures Rabbi Nachman of Westlev said that if a person wants to become a kosher person, he will for sure gonna go through thousands of up and downs in his life. And there is nothing in this world that can stop it if your intentions are to be close to Hashem, to be pure. Because if you really want to be close to Hashem, you need to be humble. And if you're gonna forget that humility, that that is the purpose of our life, so in that moment you won't have the ability really to be close to Hashem. Hashem Yidbarach is humbling us, taking us to low places, helping us to fail, making, creating obstacles, things that we won't be able to pass easily, that we're going to fail with those things, only to wake up our memory that we need to call Hashem Yidbarach from those dark places, from those embarrassing situations. And not to give up even if we're falling more and more. Because Hashem, He's the one that is supervising on us 
and He cares about us. And our, in those nine days, that in those nine days we're reminding ourselves on the destruction of Beit HaMikdash and the destruction of Jerusalem and what that we went through from Yud Zayn Beit HaMuz, Til Tisha Be'av, those are hard days, dark days, or horrible days that we went through so much sorrow. Mm -hmm. And of course that not only in those days, but those days are reminding us to keep on begging to Hashem Yidvarach to redeem us. And again, it can seem to many people as a sick game, a crazy game. What's going on, Hashem? You're destroying me, you're breaking me, you're taking what that precious from me. My happiness, my satisfaction, my joy. You're shaking my life, I'm trying to serve you, I'm trying to commit myself to you. And suddenly it's like you take the ground under, under my feet, I'm falling, and okay, then I'm calling you. And then you're not answering, so and I'm falling again, and it gets even worse. And okay, but am I in the level of David Amelech? Okay, so King David, he had the power, he was screaming, he wrote all the Tehilim, and probably many, many other prayers. He was, okay, that's King David, but me, I'm, I'm, I'm soon, I'm, 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 I'm taking another left, and that's it. And who knows if you're going to find me over there, nothing on the left. And a person is checking himself and he wants to be honest with Hashem and he wants really to stand up and to serve and to commit himself but he sees that it's getting harder and harder and that's what we said before. The problem that we have is that we hate the purpose of our life. And you can say, no, I love it, no, I like it, no, I want it but in time of difficulty, in time of crisis when someone is, is shaming you is insulting you, is rebuking you, is showing you really who you are, that you are just... You're going to forgive me on my thoughts, I'm not going to use that language. Piece of junk. I was very gentle. For you. My thoughts are way more filthy. But just for you, and it's a bit midrash. And it's the nine days. So I'm with you. But you look at yourself and you realize that you're not able to keep even the things that you believe in them. That you're not able even to continue with the things that you want to do. For sure that you, you see, okay, I want to reach the levels of the righteous ones, of the pure ones, of the holy ones. That's for sure is out of my reach, out of my, my area. Okay, great. But the things that I do believe in, not the things that I have not learned yet. Let's talk about the things that I came to those understandings already five years ago and then and, and maybe ten years ago already and, and still I'm not able to keep them. I decided to be honest. I decided not, not, not to, to, to have filthy thoughts. I decided to put fill in every day. I decided to keep every Shabbat. Always to eat kasher. Okay, things that like I already forgotten and, 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 and they were supposed to be from the foundations of my being, of who that I am. And suddenly you see that those things are, are falling from your hands. You're not even able to be who that you claim to be, who that you believed that you are. And why Hashem is doing that? Because we forget that it's all a free gift from Hashem. On all of the Torah, on all of the wisdom of Hashem, on all of the purity, on all of His kindness, it's written that we received it from the desert as a free gift. Means that only when the person comes to that place that he realizes that he is dry as the desert. And only if Hashem Barach will decide to change nature for you, for me, for every individual, to bring water into the desert, into the dry land. Only if a miracle will happen, then something will grow, something will come out of me. And that's a free gift. So now there's a very big, big, big question on that. If everything that we're achieving while serving Hashem is coming to us as a free gift, so why we're commanded? And why is it written for us that we are rewarded, that we will be rewarded kefum tzara agra, based on our effort? If it's all a free gift, so if he will want, he will give. And if he doesn't want, so it's okay, so don't give. But why is it written 
the opposite opinion that you will receive corresponding to how much effort that you put. So it is depend in how much effort I'm going to put, in how much I'm going to suffer, I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to try again and again, more and more. It depends in that. Both of, the, both of those verses are completing each other. The effort that you should put while serving Hashem Barach, it's that effort to remember that it's all a free gift from Him. That's the effort. If you sit in front of a table of kings and everyone are serving you and giving you things and you have time to learn and to pray and you can be holy and pure and your family, everyone supporting you and helping you, you have the, the, the people to guide you, to give you the right advice. So what's the deal? What's the big deal? Where is the challenge? Where is the test? There is no test. Only when you need to open your own path and you need to learn, and you need to find. Only if you put the effort, Yagata, Umatsata, and then you found, then it will bring you to faith. Then you will believe. Then you will see that it's Hashem, only based on your effort. But if you hear that it's all from Hashem, so which effort? The effort to remember that it's all Him. And that's the war, that's the darkness that we're going through every day, that we keep on forgetting and forgetting His loving kindness. The fact that every moment of our life we are surrounded with His grace and His kindness. Not only when you want some salvation, okay, I need $3,000 for tomorrow, and then if you got it, oh, it's a miracle. Also the fact that you were able to cross the street right now, that was an amazing miracle. Only the fact that the ground is solid and that you have the ability to breathe the oxygen that you need that is inside the air with all the germs and all the, 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 the filth that there is in the air and gas that's in the air, the poisons that's in the air, and you're alive and your body is throwing away all of the filth and all of the waste and somehow you stay healthy and people's life are getting longer and longer in this generation. People are getting 70 and 80 and 90 and 100 and people are healthy and they're eating poison and all kinds of, of, of food colors and all kinds of, of, of sugar and, and, and poison. Feeding ourselves with plastic and chemicals and we're, le and we're healthier than we were in, in earlier generations. We're eating plastics and we're alive. We're breathing smoke and, 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 chem and, and gas and, and, and we're good. And the body is doing those things and you're not going to think, I have a healthy body. No! You don't have anything. In one day a person can go to hell or to heaven, but with no control with no real effort on those things. You cannot really watch your, over your health. When people died in gym, people died in, in uh, vegetarian grocery stores, in the middle of the store, boom, dead, that's it, on the corn, dead, organic corn, and him, that's it, go back to nature, 100% nature. You don't have no control on your health. You can put the effort. In that effort, really, you're just showing to Hashem Yitbar, go ask, you see, the Rav Kaduri, he lived until, I don't remember, 103, 108, I don't know, he was so old. And the, what were you doing all of your life? He was smoking and eating bamba. So, <laughs> he was also learning Torah, and he was holy, he was Kadosh, but he wasn't, like, he was eating bamba and smoking cigarettes, and the Baba Sali drank amounts of Arak that you, all of us together, won't drink in our lifetime. Every day, bottles and bottles of Arak and drinking, and... No, it's not good to drink. Okay, if you found about yourself that it's not good for you to drink, so don't drink, great, but you cannot say that alcohol will kill you. Because you see that the Baba Sali was emptying bottles after bottles and he was like, it's, it's water, that's our water. And I'm drinking. Sameach. I'm so happy. No problem. Why? Because he was serving Hashem. He was committing himself to Hashem. He was aiming his heart to Hashem. And him and Hashem was in one path. And Hashem gave him the years that he wanted to give him. And Hashem will give us the years that he wants to give us. And there was another righteous man, the Ariya Kadosh, and also Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, and also Rabbi Avraham Amalach, the son of Rabbi 
of, of the Magid uh, Mimezrich, and they all lived until the age of 38 or 39. So what are you going to say now about them? Oh, maybe Hashem took them. Was it a punishment? No, they were righteous. Ari HaKadosh, Rabbi Nachman Breslev, Rabbi Abraham Malach, he was an angel. It's not the sins that brought them to die in, in 38. And it's not the mitzvot that brought Rav Kaduri to live until 103 or 8 or 9 or whatever. No, it's the will of Hashem. And you cannot understand how much Hashem will do with you in 30 years or in 70 years or in 120 years. You don't know. You estimate things with your eyes. You think that 70 years it's a lot, that 80 is much more, that 60 is not enough, that 55, oh, it's young. That's what you think. But if your life are full and you have a purpose in life and you have a mission and you do things, so you don't know what Hashem is doing with you. It might be that in 20 years you can achieve things that no one can achieve. In Me, for an example, I taught the, well, with technology, with Facebook, with YouTube, I taught Torah in hours and minutes that are equal to something like 500 years already, 400 years. Already hours of Torah that been viewed on my face talking Torah online, something crazy. Like three, four hundred years. Something wild. Like, okay, and I'm only 39, and I'm already teaching for 400 years. How can it be? Hashem can do things with you that are beyond nature, and you won't understand it. You can't get it, but that's the will of Hashem. But also the most tiniest things, like we said before, when you say Shakol Niyabit Baro, you can never know what it means to say Shakol Niyabit Baro. You feel that it gave you the permission to drink that cup, but in the end it's the same cup like you would drink without saying Shakol Niyabit Baro. It's cool, it's nice, it's satisfying you. Great, you can continue. No, it's totally different. When you said Shakol Niyabit Baro, you connected that cup of water to infinity, to the one and only. You fixed something that you cannot reach physically but now you did with that blessing when you eat that apple so something is happening if you say and that apple is not regular apple anymore and that eating that act physical act of eating is not the same like just to bite an apple when you say the bracha when you bless Hashem you connected the physical world to the world of beyond and then you made something that no one can understand it's power. And when you were learning Torah, and when you were praying to Hashem, and when you were doing tshuva, and when you were humiliated, and when Hashem Yitbarach brought, brought you to that point in life, that you will understand that you need His help. That point is a changing point. It's a key point. It's a point that all of your life are moving on forward to a better place now, because you're humble. And we hate that feeling, but we are so rewarded on, mom on those moments. Things that are opening for us after those humiliations are the real character of our soul. That's the real light of your spirit, of your true soul, of your true self. Because the troubles that you went through in life humiliated you, but not only insulted you and hurt you, also built you to be much more sensitive, and caring and able to understand other people and to listen to their issues because you can relate because you can find similarity you can find yourself close to them you can feel their sorrow because you went through the same exactly the same and you needed that because one moment before you were not human because you couldn't care less and you were so full of yourself and you were so arrogant and proud and busy and, and, and occupied and had things in mind and you thought that you're reality and then Hashem shown you that you're nothing, that you need help and now you came back to humanity. Now you're nice, now you can smile, now you have time, now you can understand people, you can pray for people. So that's the favor that Hashem is doing with us while crushing us destroying us, humiliating us. You want to learn? No, you're not going to learn today. Okay, so I'm going to daven? No, you're not going to daven. Okay, so I'm going to pray at home? No, I'm sorry, you're not going to pray at home today. Okay, can I do something small? No, sorry. So, what am I supposed to do with that? Accept of understanding that only when he will open his wide hand, his generous hand, then you will receive, there is nothing else to do. 
And when you get to that understanding, things will start open for you. Because when you're humble, so then you can receive the Torah. Like the, the Torah being given to us on Mount Sinai, the most humble mountain from all the rest of the mountains. Why? Because he was humble. When we were surrounding Mount Sinai and we realized we're not able to go and take the Torah because the ones that tried to climb, Hashem in Barach said to Moshe, warn them that they will not going to climb because I will destroy them. They will destroy themselves. And stones were falling and fire was falling from the mountain. No one was able to reach. No one was able to climb. So we all realize that there is only one, Moshe Rabbeinu, that he can go into the darkness, into the fog, into the clouds, into the thunders, into the fire, and he can go and do things, and we, we're going to die. If we're going to try, we're going to die. So we realized we're different. It, been, it was humbling for us. It was a very humbling moment. Okay, we're not like him. That man, Moshe, is unique. He's something else. He's different. He's amazing. And now, after that we realize that, now you can receive the Torah. By who? By the same Moshe. And Moshe, why he was able, okay, so let's say maybe Moshe, Moshe came humble. Moshe was humbling himself. Moshe was not, he didn't need to see all of those miracles to show him his humility. He was bringing that humility to himself. He was humbling himself. He was doing tshuva all day long. He was judging himself, and he was checking himself. And on every small default, every small mistake that he found in himself, he was humbling himself more and more. He was not hating the purpose of life. He loved it. He wanted to be humble. That was his nature. That's the difference. You know, when Korach came to Moshe Rabbeinu and is telling him, Listen, all of us, all of the people here, all of the public, we're all holy. And Hashem is between us. So he was right. Why to be so upset with Korach? Korach said something right. Everyone were holy. Everyone were pure. Hashem really was with them. What's the problem with those words of Korach? That Korach forgot one thing. That it's true. You're saying to Moshe the truth. Everyone are holy. But you forget one thing. That you are all holy because I made you holy. Because Moshe made them holy. Because Moshe took them out of Egypt and Moshe purified them and Hashem healed them by the merit of Moshe. And Moshe, he worked on himself so hard to achieve that level. So it's true, we're all in the same level. But me, because I brought you here and I brought myself with a lot of effort, and you, because I brought you and had mercy on you, Moshe is saying to his people. So the difference is only on looking on the truth. The difference between us to the real righteous people is that we received a lot of bounty from them. They gave us many, many advice, but we need to remember where we received those advice from. And if you now learn Torah, it's amazing, it's great. You keep Shabbat, you eat kasher. You just need to remember to connect it to the real purpose of life, to remind yourself it's all a free gift. I received it by the merit of the righteous ones. I received it from my teachers. I received it from that person that sat with me and taught me halakha, that taught me rules of life. I received it from Hashem mit Barach, from His generous hand, from His loving kindness. From there I received it. And if we will have that memory, if that memory will be carved on our heart, we're going to see Hashem mit Barach always. We're not going to miss one opportunity to succeed in life. Because we will have the vessels to contain the spiritual bounty in every situation, in every case, in every condition. Because the vessel must be humble. Always, now you want to pour water into a cup, you need to put the cup in the bottom, and then you fill the water. And if it's not humble, if it's not going down, it won't have the shape to contain, to receive. You can put into... A, a, a cup only when it is turning up, only when the empty part is inner, when she feels empty, where after you emptied it. If it's full of water, you cannot pour water in it. It's not a vessel. Only when it's empty, it becomes a vessel. 
So only when you're emptying yourself, only when you're realizing that everything that you have is only a free gift, what that God decided to give you, even if for you it's small amounts, if you're really going to put your eyes on it and really going to check what you have, you're going to understand that you're so rich, so wealthy. Even with the smallest, tiniest understandings that you have, try to compare yourself not by being arrogant and think how great you are, how wise you are, how amazing you are. Just really try to understand the huge favor that Hashem Yitbarach made with you to open your eyes in the way that your eyes are open. Not more than they are. Just as they are. To give you the heart that you have. Not the purest heart ever exists in the world. No, your heart. A little bit you can feel, a little bit you can see with your eyes, a little bit you can smell with your nose, a little bit you can hear with your ears. A lot of things you miss, a lot of things you can't see, you can't notice, you can't understand, you can't feel, you cannot recognize. Yes, you're right, there is much more to achieve. Hopefully we're all going to receive it. But as for now, something you have, okay, try to look at that and understand how great that is. How amazing Hashem is to give us so much. To open so many opportunities, how many amazing things we can do, even while we are so limited and, 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 and poor and weak and tired and, and lack of knowledge and lack of understanding. And still, you can save life on a daily basis if you will just want. If you will just desire to do good in this world, you can make amazing things on a daily basis. Every moment you have an opportunity, even just to smile to a person, do you know how far that smile will get? Do you know how it's going to change and affect the life of other people? You just smile to a person. Do you know? Yesterday I gave a class. I told the story in the Baba Sali. Another story, not one that I said today that he was drinking Arak. I was talking about something else yesterday. In the end of the class, me myself in the beginning of the class, I was not thinking about telling that story. Only something that happened during the class brought me to decide to tell that story on the Baba Sali. In the end of the class, a student, a friend of mine came to me and he told me, listen, that story that you said, told about the Baba Sali, it was so important for me to hear it because today something happened to me. It was 100% a cure for his issue. Why? Because Hashem knows his issue. Me, I don't have divine spirit. I don't have Ruach HaKodesh. I don't know what's going on in your mind. I'm just throwing myself for you on Hashem. And Hashem in Baruch, He takes care of you because He cares about you. So He's going to use me to say the right things for you. But it's not me. I'm just working here. You have the merit from heaven and Hashem is helping you and providing the message for you. So look how great Hashem is to put in an action in the mind of a rabbi, of a teacher, things that will fix your life. And you can hear those things coming from the seller in the grocery store and from an Uber driver and from a person that crossed the street with you, from someone that wait, wait with you to, to the subway. I don't know. In every situation, Hashem is using people. Why? Because He loves you. And also creating situations that will open your eyes to see the truth. To realize that Hashem loves you, that He cares about you. And that's His speech 24-7. Every moment of our life, Hashem is sending that message to us to tell us all of the time, I love you. I care about you. Come back to me. Listen to me. Here you can do this. Here you can do that. Be careful from that. Be careful from this. Every moment of our life, Hashem Barach is surrounding us with His kindness, with His wisdom that is educating us and building us. We just need to listen. We just need to listen, we just need to open our ears and to try to understand, okay Hashem, what are you trying to tell me? What is the message in this situation? What do you really want to tell me? Instead of falling to the sadness, to the depression, to the black bitterness, to that horrible feeling of despair, no, I cannot be humiliated anymore. I can't stand those failures again. I can't do it. I cannot hold on like that. No, you can. Relax. Try to understand that it's Hashem creating those situations for you, for your own good, to build your character, to help you to reveal the light of your own soul, your true self, that is humble. When it's hidden, you hate humility. 
Why? Because you don't want to feel it, because you don't want to drop all of your imagination and your false trust that you trust money, you trust doctors, you trust lawyers. It's easier for you. Why it's easier for you? Because you don't need to do tshuva. You don't need to stand in front of the mirror and to feel all of your lackings and to start explaining to Hashem in Barach why you came so low. You rather not to discuss those issues anymore. Please Hashem, like, leave me alone. So don't do that. Say to Hashem in Barach, don't ever leave me alone. Ever. The verse is saying it, Hashem Yohav Hashem Yochiach. God is rebuking the one that He loves. He is punishing the people that He appreciates because that He wants them to succeed. So the punishments are coming to wake up the eye, to open the eyes, to wake up the souls, to understand something is wrong with me. Not something just happened. The thing that just happened is waking me to do tshuva on things that I already forgot. Things that are walking on them day and night and I don't care, I couldn't care less. Couldn't care less about emotions of people. Couldn't care less about things that are important to other people. Couldn't care less about the purpose of life. I need to be humble. Is someone... Do you want to be humble? Do you really understand what it means to be humble? To be humble, it's a term that it's, it's, it's like it's a must. It's a basic thing that you cannot reach Hashem, you cannot know Hashem until you'll be humble. What it means to be humble? To know that everyone else, to know it, not to think about it once a day. To know it in a knowledge of 100%, 100% sure, knowing it for sure, with no doubt, that I am the worst creation on earth. That I'm the worst person ever been created. And it doesn't mean that I'm not important. It doesn't mean that I'm not great. It doesn't mean that Hashem cannot make wonders with me. It just mean one thing. That I cannot think that I'm better than someone else. Not because I have money. Not because I'm strong. Not because I'm wise. Not because I'm tall. Not because I'm making a lot of I don't know what. Not because that nothing. Everything that I have. I received it 100% as a free gift from the merciful, kind Father that decided, based on His mercy, to give that thing to me. And for me, it's a miracle. And I'm appreciating Hashem, and I have gratitude to Hashem, and I'm praising Hashem, and I remember to thank Him in every situation. And I'm praising Him, and I'm telling those miracles to everyone else. And because that I know that it's not mine, that it's foreign, that it came from another place, that it's a miracle. Those are wonders of Hashem. And Hashem is supervising on every situation, not only on your success, also on your failures, to fail you in the right places. In those places that will wake you up to realize what you need to fix. Because Hashem wants you to fix. Not because that Hashem is upset. Hashem is not upset. Hashem doesn't have the time for those nonsense. If He would be such an angry person, He would destroy us all so many years ago. Before we were born, we wouldn't come to this world. If Hashem would be such an angry person, if He would be so vicious, so cruel to destroy everyone that upsets Him, we would all be dead. Rashi is saying that if a person is doing something against the will of Hashem, it, it, he's supposed to die. That's what's supposed to come to him, that he will die. That's Midat Adin, that's judgment. From the side of trial, of judgment, you did something against the king of the world, you can understand that you're out. Out means dead. But you see that Hashem is not doing it with us. And the opposite He is doing, and waking us up against all of the rules of His Torah. Because if a person now committed a sin, so one sin drags the second one. And one sin drags another one, you have thousands of trailers behind your back of sins, and it's like a, a snowball that is rolling and rolling and nothing can stop it. And suddenly, you wake up in Shuvah. Oh Hashem, I feel so bad. What brought you to that? 
How in the world after partying and drinking and violating Shabbat and eating treif and, and shrimps and lobsters and whatever and then and, and waiting to, to see the, the, the worm in the bottom of the tequila to receive the last cup and now suddenly you want to go and serve Hashem and you have the holy desire to commit yourself to Him. How in the world did it happen? Hashem it barach just handpick you and just put you in another place. That's it. And suddenly you want a shame and you have a desire to open holy books and when I'll have time to learn Gemara and I want also to learn the holy language and to see it in the Beit Midrash and oh I missed the Shacharit today and I want to go tomorrow I need to wake up earlier. Hey who are you? What's happened? Do you remember who you are? So what happened? No, I must go to the mikveh today, I must say tikkun akrali, i never been to Uman, I must fly to Uba, Rabbi Nachman of Weser. Hi, hey, where did you came from? You were a ninja turtle 20 years ago in the sewer of New York, who were going between the pubs and the, 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 the filthiest places of them all, underground, undercover. And suddenly, Hashem. I want to do tshuva, harav, I want to do it with the dude, I don't find the words, I want to do tshuva. Who are you? Is it good for me to have tilt chelet, not tilt chelet, should I keep this, I'm Ashkenazi, I'm a Sfaradi? You were crazy two days ago and now you're asking for Ashkenazi, a Sfaradi? Hashem il Barach made a miracle with you and that's it, and from now on you're a wonder of Hashem and that's it, so just have the appreciation. Just have that realization that that's your reality. From now on you're a walking miracle and that's it. There was a student of another Admor that came to one of the students of Rabbi Nachman in Breslev and he asked him, can you tell me a wonder, one of the miracles, Muftim, of your Rebbe, of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev? So I told him, I am a miracle of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. That's a miracle. You know what I was doing 20 years ago? You don't need to hear that story again. You did the same, even worse maybe. <laughs> we all came from the filthiest places in the world, in the lowest places on earth. And our desires were even worse than that. And Hashem Ibarach decided, because He loves us and He's got an unconditional love, to take us out of hell and to bring, to put us between generous people, with wonderful people, charming people, kind people, kind people, nice people, friendly people, supportive people, positive people, sitting, learning Torah, talking, doing Kiddush, Avdalah, comes to the Shlishit, Melavimarka, let's do this, let's do that, Kimat Sadikim, let's go to the oil, let's go to the mikveh. What's going on? That's 100% the supervision of the Creator on your life. He just switched, took you 180 degrees to the other direction from where you're, you were facing one hour before. Not because of how righteous you are, you were not righteous. Not because how pure you were, you were not pure. Wise, you were not wise. Innocent, you were not innocent. Clean, you were not clean. A genius, nothing. Based on His loving kindness, you are actually like the dry desert that nothing can grow from it, with no hope, with no salvation, cannot redeem yourself, and no one around you had no advice. A person talked to me last week and he told me he had a huge, horrible crisis with his child. And he said that after going to all of the rabbis, all of the important people, all of the wise people that he knew, he was talking about a righteous man, a from from birth, that he tried everything, went to speak with Admorim, with righteous people, he said, I realized that all of my faith was faith that based on false, on my imagination. I could not receive an advice from no rabbi, from no righteous man. No one had the advice for me. So, if you're representing the Torah, and I came to ask you, and all of my life were based on your opinion, and when now I have a problem, you're telling me, it's a problem, your kid is very problematic, whoa, you need maybe to kick him out of the house, you need to do this, you need to do that, so I cannot trust you. And he lost his trust in people, and then he realized that he needs to scream to Hashem. 
And he starts screaming to Hashem until Hashem brought him to meet one unique individual person, a holy hidden man that I don't have no understanding about how righteous and pure that guy is. And he came and gave him an advice that solved the problem. But rabbis that knows all of the books and know all of the halachot, all the Shulchan Aruch and all of the Gemarot by heart and learning Zohar and don't go to sleep and they're always in, the, in, in shul and in synagogues and whatever, they didn't have the advice for him to save his son. And basically they would kill his son with their advice to kick him out of the house. And when he met that rabbi and he told him, that person, that righteous man that I told you about, and asked him what to do, he told him, you don't throw him from the house. That was his first line. And then he told him, but what should I do? His mind was so narrow, he was so confused, he didn't know what to do. He said, but what I'm going to do, this, that. And he told him, you don't throw him from the house, second time. First of all, you don't throw your child from the house. Who said that? A righteous man. That solved the problem in the end. Why? Because he really understand the will of Hashem. You don't throw your kids from the house. Hashem is not throwing us from his table, from his house. Even if you felt rejected, even if you felt so down, so low, so poor, so neglected, it's an opportunity for you to buy and purchase humility, to be humble, and to be the closest one to Hashem. The one that is the worst is the one that can become the closest one to Hashem. Maximum you will be humble and Hashem will be with you. If you won't be stupid. If you will decide to take that lesson. And to try to find the wisdom, the message, the hint that Hashem is hinting through that situation, through that embarrassment, through that difficulty, that challenge. Don't give up because of the difficulty. To achieve that huge, amazing thing, it depends only in one thing, in the will, in your holy desire. What really you want. If in the end you want money, you're not going to make it. Not that you're not going to make money. You won't be humble. Maybe you're going to make a lot of money. I'm not stopping you. Humble you won't be if you want money means that even if you found yourself in a situation that is breaking you to pieces and now Hashem Barach is telling you, let's be humble, I'll help you and you're going to fight and you're going to want the money so you not, won't have the ability to hear the message. If you want honor and now your wife will humiliate you, your boss will humiliate you, your parents will humiliate you. Now if you want honor, you won't be able to listen to the message. You will fight and you're going to refuse and you're going to argue and you're going to attack back and then you're going to miss the message. When you have another desire, you're not able to learn. Only if you want Hashem and that's the purpose of your life to be fixed completely, to be humbled completely, to want Hashem always. Only like that you'll have the ability to read between the lines, not to be insulted from the shames and from the rebukes and from the insultings and from your failures and from your mistakes because you're going to have a higher purpose in all of those situations in life. Your purpose will not going to be to learn Torah. Even the most genius person in the world that learns so much Torah he also got days that he cannot learn the sin. He also got his downs. If your purpose is to learn Torah, you won't achieve humility through it. Even if you want to pray and to do tshuva, you won't be able to be humble completely. Because you will find days that in those days you will be arrogant and you won't be able to do tshuva. Only when you are aiming your thoughts and your heart and your mind and your intention only to one thing to do and to go through whatever he wants me to go through and always to remind myself that it's him only like that you can keep yourself up and also to learn from your failures and from your downs because there is no righteous man that will walk on this earth on that planet and will do only good and not gonna fail and not gonna sin it's not exist 
Even King David failed. Even Moshe Rabbeinu failed. Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, they failed. All of our ancestors, they failed. They had failures. They had downs. They made mistakes. And they did tshuva on it. That was their greatness. That's why they're so important. Not because they never failed. Only on Jesus, they are saying that he never failed. But in our religion, the Torah itself is opening and revealing and uncovering the truth that even the most holiest people of them all failed. So you need to believe that the failures are not the reason that you are far from Hashem. Because on every failure you can do tshuva. And immediately when a person is doing tshuva, he becomes one with Hashem. It's written that kol amitcharet al avono, a person that regrets on his sin, mochalin lo al kol avonotav, they're going to forgive him on all of his sins. From heaven they're going to open for you the gates of tshuva and going to bring you further and further, closer and closer to Hashem until you're going to know Him and going to recognize Him and going to find Him and going to understand Him, going to feel Him, going to love Him, going to be one with Him. It depends on Him one thing, in your will, never to give up, never to back off. Never to surrender to the laziness, to the sadness, to the depression, to the arrogant. Never to refuse to the rebuke. Never to refuse to learn the lesson. Always to accept it. To want to want to know. To want to want. If you gave up, it means you don't want enough. Not that you don't have the power. The power is the will. Your power is your will. And you can accomplish and achieve everything if you will want. And if you're not going to back off. The only way to do that is always to talk with Hashem in Barach, to make Hashem, to force Hashem to become your best friend, your only friend in this world. Every day to talk to Him, every day to explain to Him, to apologize, to ask for forgiveness, to beg, to tell Him, listen, and if you have questions, so to argue with Him and to fight and not to back off until you're going to understand why in the world you had to do that thing to me, why in the world you did it to her, to Him, to them. What's going on here, Hashem? I want to know you. I believe that you're good, but I cannot see your good. I believe that you're mercy, but I cannot recognize your mercy. I believe that you're kind, and I cannot see to me. In my eyes, it looks like you are cheap. I can't understand why you don't give me the money. I need to pay my rent. I need to pay my debts. What's going on, Hashem? Let me understand. You're not cursing. You're not insulting. Your desire is really to find the truth. Explain to me why in the world I need to be poor. Why I need to be thrown to the ground. Why I need to be humiliated. What's the lesson I want to learn? Be careful. He will answer that prayer. And then you're going to have to deal with the answer. And it's hard sometimes. But if your will brought you to ask, the same will will give you the power to deal with the answer. And you will be answered over and over. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So if you will ask for the truth, you will find it. You will recognize the truth. And you will know the truth. You will realize what really stops you in life. And what really can bring you forward closer to Hashem. It depends in your will, in the pure intention of your heart. And in a conversation and communication with the Creator. Talking to him like you talk to your best friend. It's not a breastless thing to do it what they do. It's written in Mesilat Yesharim. It's written in Shulchan Aruch. It's written in the Chumash. It calls Mitzvat Atfilah Mideoraita. It's the obligation to pray. An obligation that it's written in the verses of the Bible. That we are commanded to speak with Hashem. And the Rambam is telling us, Rambam was not a breastless Hasid. 
And the Rambam is telling us that the person needs to talk to Hashem and to ask for all of his needs and to confess and to do tshuva in Hilchot Tshuva and in Hilchot Fila. You can find the explanation of the Rambam on how to pray and on how to talk and to discuss and to ask and to praise and to thank and to confess and to regret and to apologize. And it's not Hasidut at all. It's Halakha Midehoraita. It's like to keep Shabbat and to eat kasher, and to learn Torah, and to put filin. It's one of the obligations that the Bible is commanding us to talk to God, to ask for our needs, to ask for forgiveness on our mistakes. So for that you need to have a certain time that you share, and you talk, and you tell, and you explain, and you apologize, and you ask for forgiveness, and you ask for salvation, never to fail in those things again. And to learn about that subject, it's to learn about Hashem. How to come closer to Him, it's to know Him. It's not between Torah. Those are the vessels, those are the foundations, that with them you can learn Torah. The humiliation, to be humble, that's the tool that will bring you to be a master of prayer. A person that pray, he prays only because that he understand that he cannot save himself. So he needs to ask for someone that is higher than him. So he's praying. The prayer is a result of humility. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu, that he was the most humble person on the universe, he was the one that was praying, that the Gemara is testifying, that there was no point in the sky, that Moshe was not shooting prayers to that point. No one point that he missed. He was praying and praying and praying and praying, here, 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 Hashem, 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 years, on years, on years, until he covered all the sky with his prayers. If the Gemara is writing those lines, so it must be true. No point in the sky that he was not shooting prayers to that point. That's how many thousands and thousands of hours of prayers Moshe Rabbeinu had. That's how he became Moshe Rabbeinu. Not because of his legacy and his family and the wealth and the connections that he had in the government. No. Only because that he was humble. And he wanted to know what Hashem wants from him. And when he had problems with Hashem, he knew how to fight. When Hashem told him, you're going to be the one that will go and redeem the Am Israel from Egypt, for seven days he was fighting with Hashem, arguing. In the burning bush, in that cave, in the bottom of Mount Sinai. Hashem is telling him, you're the one, and he's saying no, and they're arguing, and Hashem gives him evidence for the reason why he needs to go, and Moshe is bringing other evidence to prove, to show him, I'm not worthy, I'm not able, he had a problem. So he was fighting, he disagreed with Hashem, so he was talking on it more and more, and when Hashem told him that he's about to punish Am Israel, Moshe Rabbeinu said, you have to kill me first, you can't do nothing. You can't kill no one. You want to kill? Kill me. Erase me from the book that you wrote. Hashem is telling him, listen, I'm going to walk on Israel now to the Holy Land. I'm sending my angels. My angels are going to walk them, going to protect them. Moshe Rabbeinu is telling him, stop, stop, stop. If you're not coming with us, we're not going. Moshe, what's going on? Is it your game or Hashem's game? No, Moshe, he knows that he knows Hashem even more than Hashem is telling him. Why? Because he knows about himself that he's got only one will, to do God's will. So when he's got an argument with Hashem, so something is wrong with Hashem. Because he knows himself that he doesn't have no selfish will, because he cleaned himself from all of his desires. He doesn't want anything. He wants whatever Hashem wants. And suddenly Hashem wants to kill his children? Something is wrong. No way. No, Hashem wants to leave us alone in the desert with this. No, no, something is wrong. My heart is telling me that something is wrong. Moshe can say that. Why? Because he cleaned his heart. So now when your heart is clean, every feeling that you have means something. But when the heart is contaminated, full with thick blood, with lust, with desires, you can't feel. You can't understand anything. You're in a problem. So our job is only to ask from Hashem Barach, 
טהר ליבנו לעובדך באמת, לב טהור ברא לי אלוקים, ורוח נכון חדש בקרבי, create a new heart for me, give me a heart of flesh and of flesh, give, let me the, give me the ability to feel, create a new heart, purify my heart, give me the right spirit, give me the, the, the wisdom, the power of understanding, to know your will. Those prayers will come out only from a desiring heart, from a healthy heart that wants to be purified. And I bless you all that Hashem will open for you those gates of tshuva to appreciate yourselves and to understand that to do tshuva it's to give yourself another opportunity. So give yourself that opportunity and do tshuva and come back to Hashem. And Hashem, with His loving kindness, will open the gates of Tshuva for everyone that are looking for Him with honesty and truth. Amen. Can you hear song? Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.